we we gathered in Sedona, Arizona, a mystical, magical land full of red magical rocks and vertices. But did we see any of that? Oh no, we did not see any of that because we were too busy inside a conference building. So we were just deciding what's the future. So I'll share this summary today. I'm gonna go through some pictures and I'm gonna try to add as many pictures as possible. Hmm. So this is Bill and I, the first few hours of the conference and you can tell we're still happy. No, I'm just kidding, we were happy the whole time. But this is the building that we were in. These are some of the participants. I was very ex exuberant the first few moments there. This was the beautiful landscape that we were in. And I think it was a full moon or, or like it was pretty, pretty full. And this gorgeous red rock was just jutting out of the, the landscape. And we had this large green grass, which is not a natural phenomenon in Sedona, I'm very sure. But I walked around these grounds as much as possible because it was a lot of sitting. So they had this little formation. It was actually really pretty. And there's this frost on the ground, which Josh could tell us what that is exactly because he lives in like a cold place. All right. So most of the time we sat in these big rooms or big room listening to speakers. And they had a great crew, a lot of good sound system and cameras and putting the slides up so i thought the technical aspects were really well done so let's talk about who organized this lynn um fuentes fuentes i'm not sure i can't remember how to say her name and um jose those were our main presenters and this is just um nam namali who also was a presenter at the event so these were the main organizers lynn and jose they really worked so hard to put the whole thing together. I was a volunteer. I was a yoga teacher at the event. So I, I saw the behind the scenes and all the work that they did. It was just an incredible amount of organization. So 140 people joined together. And what did we have in common? This interest integral, whatever that means, <laughs> which was discussed at, at length. So we had four days of presenting presentations, discussions, and networking. The tone was of openness, of curiosity. What is the future? A desire for community, happiness to be together. People were so happy. There's just, everyone was smiling and joyous. And we had this objective that Lynn and Jose were intent on, and that was to leave with an action plan. So we divided up into themes. And I think there was maybe like 10 different groups, subgroups with all these different themes. Each group had to leave with an action plan at the end. I will reveal later if that actually happened. So who showed up? It, it's funny because I talked to all these different people who were there and I found out most of them are coaches, consultants, doctors, psychotherapists or psychologists. Uh, therapists, professors, and me, this weird person who's, I don't even know what I am. Who am I? That's a good question for another day. But most of the people were boomers. That's really important to realize. And they, when they saw me, they thought I was really young. I don't know, great, great genetics. But they were like, oh, you're so young. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, it was mostly older folks at the conference, which actually is one of the subjects that Nomali talked about, the aging of our organization. All right, so this is just more pictures of all the people. We have this really big camera, and I would love to hear Josh at some point because he was watching remotely, and he can share the experience from the remote side. Everything was recorded, and you can actually watch the whole replay of the conference on the recording for like $99, I believe. So if you're interested in listening to any of these sessions, you can do that. So why, what did we want? I think the overwhelming thing that we wanted was community. Really, we wanted to be around people who have the same kind of viewpoint on the world. We want support. We want to feel connected. It's just this overwhelming desire, especially after the pandemic. People really wanted to be together. Some more pictures, made new friends. Everyone was so happy. All right, I'm gonna now do a lot of 
like tech, uh, summary of the of the thing. So this is my chance to say you should go buy the ninety nine dollars because you could watch all these presentations. Okay, so Roger Walsh kicked us off with karmic yoga, and he gave us ten different top like tips on how to use karmic yoga to change the world. The, the first few, I was just kind of like zoned out because we I had been traveling since early in the morning and this was the, the night of the first day when we all arrived. I was really exhausted. But as he went along, I started taking copious notes and realized like this guy has some really great things. Uh, for instance, before you go into a stressful situation, you should pause, take three breaths, and then set an intention for what you want to do. And then afterwards, review and see if you did the thing that you wanted to do and learn from that. So he gave, that was like a very short summary of, of a, a speech that had 10 different topic points of how to use karmic yoga. And it, it was really, really an inspirational, great way to start the, the event. Bruce Alderman, oh my gosh. I, I definitely have heard him before on some podcasts, but he really blew me away. He had this great presentation and it was very vulnerable. And he was talking about how, you know, close people to him have died during this pandemic. And he is really, he's really been impacted by that. And that we have to really take time to heal from this. And he had this, this really like incredibly enlightening presentation. But the thing that I, I the takeaway from it was that there's an undetermined future that we're here to try to work on the, the future. What's the future? And he said, you know, there's different worldviews. And one of them is the future is all laid out. Like God made a plan. It's all laid out. You just have to walk down the path because it's there. He doesn't believe that. He believes it's an undetermined future and that we are standing at the edge of the undetermined future. So it's really something that we need to create. It's not going to, I mean, it's going to get created, but we can make it happen. We can do things. And he, he said that we're standing on the, the frothy edge of this, this chaotic edge right with all these splashes of things happening of the undetermined future and that we need to meditate on that and do embodied meditation so he didn't get into some of the specific practices that he thought we should do and maybe he has that more on his podcast but that was just like that was the second day and it was completely mind-blowing so the the format of the second day was that we had I think two or three rooms and there was just these smaller breakout sessions so people could go to different sessions for a few hours. Hmm. Terry O'Fallon also blew me away. And I know a lot of people probably know her. She's very famous, but this was my first exposure to her. So she was talking about, can we do no harm? Can we do no harm? That was her main subject. And she talked about various different things as a child develops. But one of the ones that was really quite breathtaking to me. And I'm going to just go on to full screen so I can share this. So she was saying that when you have a baby, the baby is looking at your face to learn how to understand humans. So she was holding this invisible baby and looking at her baby. And then she said, but in our modern era, people are holding their baby right here. And then their phone is like this. And the baby doesn't get to see the face. And the baby doesn't develop as well as it should. And I was just like, oh my gosh, we're killing the next generation. The next generation is, is not going to make it. So that was really a momental, momental, that's not a word. It was very profound. And I think that th this is the kind of thing that the leaders in this organization, or it's not even really an organization, that's the kind of content that I think we need to get out there to all these parents who are raising their children, looking at their phones. So that was like, it was a huge takeaway for me. And I'm interested in taking more classes from her, sharing that more out more widely. I've already shared, I think I was sitting on an airplane with someone, I sent them the link to that. 
since I don't have any kids. All right. Oh man. Controversial. Controversial. The next guy, I don't even know how to say his name. Fionn Wright. Now this guy is very controversial and uh, there is lots of, you know, debate on the, my, my ride home with the people I was riding with back to the airport about China. So he basically, his takeaway is China has done a lot of good. It's done a lot of good. And we in the West get really down on China, but they have done a lot of good things and we should learn some of the things that they've done. So this, this one is worth $99 just to watch his presentation. He goes into a lot of charts and graphs into how China has done well, how they've raised people out of poverty, you know, educating people. And it, I'm sure Josh, you know, he would agree it's a very controversial talk as Josh probably saw that. But the thing that he did was he had, I would say, 20 different slides on these beautiful graphics that the, some of them were on the little prim, promo um, picture for this event. And maybe later I can share some of those pictures. Just incredibly gorgeous diagrams. And I asked him during the Q&A, like, is he going to make a book, like a high gloss coffee table book with all these diagrams? And he he said no, but I think he needs to. Maybe I'll try to message him. But anyways, he, he does a really good job. Controversial topic about has China done something that we should be proud of? Maybe another topic for a session in the future. All right, Greg Thomas. Now, I had listened to him on Glenn Lowry before. And I thought he was a really cool person. So his presentation was called Let's Deracialize the Future. And it's all about dif like differentiating people based on race differences is, is just so silly. It's like, I only like people with green eyes and everyone else, you know, who they don't like. It's just it's like picking one random trait and trying to really like try, uh, doing science or whatever. It's just so not useful. And he gave a lot of really good presentations, a lot of different quotes, and he walked through the whole thing about culture. I have a few slides from him next, but I think it's just a really great way to think about it and to, to uh, it definitely opened my mind on, on this topic. So highly recommend you spend $99 to listen to Greg Thomas's overview of, of that hot topic. Okay. Oh my gosh. Brett, Brian Robinson. He just blew my mind about how to run organizations. So this is definitely something probably that I'm going to be using in various organizations that I'm involved in. So it's called Holacracy and it's called, it's basically a role-based organization structure that is all about anyone who's doing a role can tell anyone else like, hey, I need help, or you're not, you're, you and I need to work on our interface. So it, even the newest intern can tell the CEO, you need to change how you're doing your work because it's impacting my work. So it's really a great way for communication. And he has a whole presentation and there's a website full of great information that is out there. Okay, Lynn Fuentes had this presentation on chronic illness and i have various you know very minor you know in autoimmune issues not not anything really big but i thought this was a really great way to reframe chronic illness um, and people who are working hard to take care of people who have chronic illness that it is a journey that that people are on and you can learn so much. You can learn. There's so much growth. She has a book called The Cohen of, I think, Illness. And she gave it to us all who joined. I think everybody, but I, I definitely got it. So there's growth there. There's growth that's available. And I think a lot of it is about... It's too late last night about this guy. I, oh, yeah. I failed. Really oh. Thank you. So there's a lot of available growth, even if you have a chronic illness. And I think it's... I'm going to try to get him out today. Okay. I was. Paul, I... can you help me? Can you mute David?
Okay. All right, good. Thank you. All right. So Frankie Louise is she's a filmmaker who's getting a PhD or a master's degree on AI based art. So that was a super interesting uh, presentation, especially with my background in tech. Humanity, and one of her big things is that humanity has been involved in a simulation for a while. So what is AI? Is it that different? And then the last most controversial presentation, which I don't think is, was actually recorded, was um, Namali's Integral Needs Some New Leaders. Who's going to step up? So I'm going to stop for a second and tell you a little bit about what happened in that room. So this was like 5.30, 5 o'clock after we've been in meetings since 9 a.m. I was just so exhausted. And there's this, it's a smaller room, but it was packed. Every So many people. It was interesting. I think there was more young people in this room than older, you know, sorry for using the word older. And, and. You no, know, Molly said, I mean, she just kind of laid it out and I didn't even hear the whole thing because I was actually going on a walk in the beautiful afternoon. And she was basically saying that all of our leaders in Integral are aging. They're just aging out of the system. And P uh, Ken is very sick. I don't know if everyone knows that, but he's very, very sick. Pretty much everyone who's been a leader for a long time is is really sick or old or you know not doing so well anymore. So we need to really think about the future of our leadership. And I thought it was a really interesting conversation. She had some ridiculous like map of like so many things uh, as, as we tend to like to make. And then at the end, so there's, there's this young people who I kind of got to know. And there was this really young person, Tyler. And he he's a former military guy and he's a personal trainer. So I, I don't get a picture with him. I'm really sad. But like she's going on and on. We need the next generation of leaders. Like people need to step up. And I'm like looking at Tyler. I'm like he's standing off to my side. I'm like, Tyler, you should stand up. You should do this. Like that's kind of like what I was saying to him with my eyes. And so then Nomali is like, oh, and just by the way, oh, she's like, to stand up who wants to lead the next round and a bunch of people raised their hands i mean it was like 10 people that raised their hands tyler wasn't one of them and neither was i but all these people raised their hands and then Namali says yeah we're, we're by the way we're very much uh, like not action oriented like it's a real shadow problem for us or something like that and then she ended the whole session she didn't write anyone's name down she didn't like ask them like, okay, if you raise your hand, we're gonna go on a Zoom call on Monday after we get all that back. No, she didn't record anyone's name down. I was just like, this is not how you, or I've been involved in non-for-profits and organizations for a year. This is not how you do it. Like if anyone raised their hand, you go and get them to sign a contract that they're gonna do the work, right? Anyways, Tyler and I, after she ended, after she's like, everyone, no one's name was written down no next steps not like if you were interested sign up for this list anyways you can tell i'm really getting passionate about this um i was passionate at the time also so tyler I, i'm like tyler what just happened literally we just ended and no one signed up to do the next step so tyler and i made a little form on a sheet of paper and we walked around and we got people to sign up so we I'll tell you more about what happened next, but we actually made like the next step, got phone numbers, emails. And so the future of Integral is going to be happening. Don't worry. Okay, sorry, I got really excited there. All right, onwards, onwards. All right, so here's some of the pictures from the conference. So this is Terry looking at the baby. Uh, this is Greg talking about the deracial, and I have a few slides from him. So he goes through worldview from a racial perspective and just reading this, you can see, like, is this a good thing? You can just read, okay, so a racial worldview is two things, a racial model of the world and a model for acting in a racial world. 
It turns the individual into a racial agent who acts and turns the world into a racial arena in which actions make sense. So he's trying to say, like, this is not where any of us want to live. Like, this is not a good thing. Like, is that really what we want? Um, I think this was a quote from Audrey Smed Derry. He had so many good things in here. I'm just giving you a little taste. By racial worldview, I simply mean believing and acting in accordance with social convention that people can and should be regarded as a member of one or more handful of nebulous, restricted, contradictory, conflicting subspecies called races. So he didn't agree with this lady's. Um, he, he didn't like it, basically. And he brought in Paul Bowman's How Culture Works. Culture is a combination of tools, meaning behave, meanings that explain, expand behavior, extend learning, and channel choice. Anyways, the call to action, which I would love for all of you to get involved in if you're in the U.S., is that he's taking, the ch he's changing race on the census. So I'll paste this in the chat. <clears throat> so he really wants to sort of make race not like the most important thing. It's not like how we should be deciding anything important, including elections. Like, oh, this is a you know a black person who's running for this. Like, is that really the number one thing that we should think about? How about other aspects? Anyways, okay, here's Fionn. And you can just see some of the picture. And I, I think I didn't paste any more, but I, I'll go grab them. All right. So China, he was all about China. Very controversial. I would love to hear what people think about it. All right. This is Frankie. So Frankie and I are in the sub team for tech and AI. And we are, I'll, I'll go into what we're working on together. But she has a really great presentation. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about low lights. Because I'm almost done with this with this presentation. The food. There was not enough food. We literally ran out of food at one lunchtime. There was almost no protein. It was sad. It was just terrible. As a as a health nut, I can't even believe. Like I am all about high quality protein. I don't think there was any beef at all. Like it's just it was it was a desert. Oh yeah, and there was no dessert. Not even fruit. Okay, I, I'm t I just I know we're not supposed to eat sugar, blah blah blah. But come on, you can have some chocolate, you know, dark chocolate something mousse, right? Without a lot of sugar in it. Anyways, I just can't even believe it. So there was no flavor. Everything was super bland. It was like they were told they told the kitchen like these people don't want any flavor. Please don't put any flavor on the food at all. I actually lost weight. So the last day of the conference, I had this pair of pants that fit me at, you know, at the beginning of the conference. At the end of the conference, it was falling off. I didn't have a belt or anything. It wasn't, women's pants don't have belts part. Like it's not a thing, unfortunately. And it was really annoying. It was really annoying. Okay. Others, the timing. I think the timing of the conference was really, really challenging. There was hardly any breaks. We were in organized sessions from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. There was not enough physical movement. I, I think an organized hike to see Sedona would have been a fantastic thing. Like we didn't get to out off the campus or off the resort property at all. Um, I just walked around the resort property several times a day. The hotel was not very good. It was like really in need of a remodel. Our heater was broken the first night. Oh my gosh, and the music that we danced to was terrible. All right, so let's talk about the projects that I'm going forward on. Everyone had a different thing. So I am working with Tyler and this group called Integral Leadership in Action. Uh, we are working on a directory. So we're gonna create a directory. Now, step one is just create a directory of people who associate with Integral. And then once we have a directory, then we can start organizing in different kinds of patterns. People are doing various things and we can get organized around that. And then I'm working with Frankie Louise on this AI tech education for kids. And we're partnering with some other people we met at the event. So only one other group came away with action items from the sub teams. Everyone else was like, we believe 
the world should be a better place or something vague like that. It was just like, what are they doing? I'm a very action oriented person. And so is my friend Frankie and Tyler. And I think it's all because we're too young and too underdeveloped. You know, we haven't ascended to the level of consciousness of like, oh, it's fine. You like, I think there's some level of development that we haven't gotten to. And that's why we're very action oriented. All right. So that ends my official presentation. I, I would love actually to hear from Josh because Josh was watching on the live stream and I would like to hear from the other perspective of like, how was that? Was it good? Could you follow what would happen? Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for the presentation. That, yeah, I've, in a different world, I would have been there. Sedona is a beautiful place. And uh, yeah, the fact that people came from around the country or world and then didn't even walk around Sedona is like, it reinforces my belief that I did the right thing by just <laughs> going online. But I would say the production quality of the videos was actually very high. So they had like a couple cameras and they'd be doing like zoom ins and stuff like that. It was like top notch. So whoever did that was really on the ball. So it was a good experience in that regard. There was no interacting with the sessions though. So we who were on the chat could kind of interact with one another, but we had no interface with the humans in the human world. And so we actually, well, some of us, created a Zoom call where all of us who were attending could go on and chat amongst one another. So that was good. But we did feel very separated from the conference. Obviously, we physically weren't there, but there could have been more of that. So this is not necessarily a gripe session. This was the first time they did the conference. So don't expect to have everything perfect. But that is definitely, I would say, one of the big things if you're going to have people tune in. Otherwise, it's like, in a sense, just having bought the recordings would be the same thing. Um, there were only, you couldn't choose between stuff. They would, they decided only a handful of things would actually be recorded or, or beamed in. And several times they were not the things that were promised. Like they had to change it at the last minute because of the room. It's funny because the, the, the two that I was most looking forward to did get changed, but then I accidentally ended up watching one. I'm like, all right, what is this highly sensitive person crap? And I was like, oh, this sort of applies to me. So it was weird. I, I got tricked into learning something that was actually relevant to myself. So I can't complain about that. And one of the ones was the ecology aspect, which I was very interested in. I I wish there was more involved with that. I had mentioned that to the organizers. There, there was no follow-up about that in advance. I also didn't follow up with them. So I, I'll take the blame on that. And beyond that, I, I think it was definitely a worthwhile thing. I have the recordings and I'm going to be going through those. I don't know how many were recorded. I don't know if every single session was recorded. I, I somehow doubt it. But at the very least, the the engagement sessions, like the the discussion sessions that weren't just presentations, that would be a very valuable thing for people to be able to engage with in some way, even if it was just, oh, we have some questions from the online people. Let's go through those at the end or whatever. I get prioritizing the, the humans first. But other than that, I think it was a really good effort and more than a good effort, it was a good result. And I think it's really cool that there are people who are doing some follow up with all of it. I'd be curious to see if this would happen again. Yeah, I really, I hear you, Josh. And I think that the next level is treating people on the remote side as humans, which they are, by the way, you are human. So, all right, thank you, Josh. And I see Tisphere has a hand up. Thank you for the presentation. And I, it, you really gave a glimpse of the atmosphere. And I think I'm going to watch the $99. Uh, I'm really excited that you took the list of the people 
this is uh, really something I want to be involved in. I want to tell you that before the conference, I had a meeting, only me with, uh, with Jose and, uh, and Lynn, the organizer. And I asked them to organize a post activity of the conference, which we will take uh, people that we think that can do real action afterward and, and post doing it. And they said that they, they don't want to be involved in, it, in this. So this is why maybe they didn't really contact the people back there. They want just to create the environment and said, listen, this is too much for us to do all the, only this. We don't want to take care of the post uh, activities. And, but, we, but, but they said it's a good idea and they really want to do it. And they asked me to do it, but I couldn't come. So I'm glad that you are doing it. Well, step one is just gathering the names and what people do. Are they an organization? Are they individual? And then step two is we can do next step, right? I, I don't know what the next step is, but right now I see us all as nodes that maybe there's some connections, but we're all like these dots across the whole globe. And I would like to get us all to be somehow connected and then we can be as involved as we want to. But I think just knowing that there's people out there who have the same viewpoints as us, or not viewpoints, but a way, a worldview, it can just give us so much moral support because I do believe everyone is doing great work. Like everyone's out there doing great, fantastic, meaningful work. And all we want is just a little support, like a little bit of connection. So my challenge, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I said I, said I can I can uh, clearly see why she was talking. There is no next uh, leader, next generation leaders, and actually I did some research why there is no leader in the community and why uh, why is a spiral dynamic integral community fail to do some real impact in the world? And I have some some insight to share, but not in this group. And there are some good reason and definitely one of the solution is the inability to come together. So what if you could organize these people and I will be loved to be one of them. I think this is the first step, but uh, I would love to show you the reasons that it's not doing real impact in the world and what we should or can do. I think this is a fascinating subject that I've actually spent the last month, I guess now, thinking deeply about. So I would love maybe to spare you and I can just send each other some emails. Awesome, okay. Okay, Paul? Yeah, I just, a couple of, couple of thoughts. Um, or one question, was there any discussion about you know, in the leadership, what the need to kind of rethink the whole role and meaning of leadership in the in the in an integral context, and kind of kind of what stimulates that with me is that you know I again I'm, I mean I tend to follow some of the traditional concepts of what leadership is. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go to the the. Adiza's definition of, you know, coal as power, authority, and influence. And it's it, a lot of discussions, you know, there's tons and tons of, okay, somebody just started. I did not do that. Who, who did that? Someone really innovative. Would you want to do it, Josh? No, no, sorry. I, I thought, I don't know why other people can see the whiteboard that I didn't share. I, I was just trying to take notes on my computer. I'm I mean, trying to I'll to turn on the screen share. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to close it now. I've never used this before. Sorry. Okay. Everything seems to be so oriented towards accumulating power and authority. And 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 I it seems like we need to 
maybe readdress the issue of how, what kind of a role influence needs to play in leadership, particularly in, in an inter internet world. I mean, how do you, this need to go to scale so you can accumulate as much power and authority, and along with that comes the riches that are derived from that. Um, it's just not lost on me that that's, the integral movement just fell into that trap right away. And, you know, so was there any discussion about what, you know, when you say, well, we need a new generation of leadership, what should they do? What should, an, what should you know, what form should that leadership take? What are the structures that it needs to follow? There wasn't that much about that, okay. but I have, I have theories. Yeah. So I, I, I have been working with volunteers for many, many years for, with Toastmasters. So I have very clear ideas about what, like an emergent, an emergent kind of network state. This is going to be crazy. Everyone's just buckle your seatbelt. So there is this guy, Balaji Srinivasan, that wrote this book called The Network State. He was on a podcast for seven and a half hours talking about how people who have an affinity for whatever can create a community that first is just in the cloud, and then maybe later they create some kind of physical manifestation. So I'm putting together thoughts about how we're all these nodes on this in the globe, and if we could connect with a low overhead cost this is the problem with people who are young i see people in the chat like young people are facing many problems if you can create a low cost connection that actually gives more value to the individual so that together we can do more than we can apart that would be a value to everyone and to the world so I was writing equations out during my meditation the other day about how together we could have more value than apart. So I think this is something that's only becoming available in the last 10, 15 years. And so words like the metaverse, whatever, I don't care about all that stuff. I just think there, there's ways that we can do this that I think are slowly coming to mind. And as a tech person, I, I, I'm definitely like thinking about what are ways we can do that with a low overhead. And then if someone wants to spend more time investing, they can, they can do that. And I think um, that that's a possibility, but that's sort of what I'm, I'm starting to think of. So first net, the network, the, the directory, and then after that, more, more abilities to connect at deeper levels if desired. You know, not required. Thanks. That's really interesting work. Yeah. So the 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 leadership then that comes out is all about pretty frameworks. It's not about and then sub teams. So so people all have passions. Like Josh cares about ecology. So if he could get connected with a hundred other people from across the planet, they're all doing fascinating, incredible work. They can learn from each other to each work faster and better in the areas that they are. And maybe one person knows social media and everyone else is like, I can't figure this out. And so they could do a little session, right? But it would be like an enclave of a group of people who care about the same thing. Whereas if you know, I'm more interested in like health. And so I could find health people across the planet and we could exchange knowledge. So instead of it being the leadership is not someone who's like, everyone needs to do such and such. It's more of there are small groups that are then enabled to work together faster because the framework is there. And then we're all doing good work, but but not the overhead of some kind of top down hierarchy that's telling us what to do. That's kind of what I'm my brain is leading towards an emergent network state of entities doing great things and supporting each other, knowing that they're not alone. Okay, I'm going to come off my soapbox. Sophia? Hi, Beth. Yeah, um, I thought it was a very interesting presentation and the way that you framed it as well with different aspects of your experience. That was great. Um, 
I'm actually speaking to something that came up um, about eight or nine minutes ago that was, so does anybody want to follow on from Beth and what she's talking about leadership? Because what I have to say can come in at any time. Josh or Christian, do you have your hand up to respond to what Beth was just talking about? Yeah, I had some comments on leadership. I don't know if we need to go in chronology or not. What do you, what do you think? Well, go ahead because I'm going to talk about something different. Okay. Well, maybe then. Okay. Well, sorry to cut in line then, but yeah, I did have some leadership comments. So, uh, well, first of all, there's going to be a salon next week. I'm, I'm going to quote lead it, but it's just going to be a salon on ecological collapse, like that concept. So, no presentation, no framing beyond that. Just that's going to be the salon discussion, just so people have an idea of, okay, you can come to it or not. Um, that's going to be the topic. Well, you don't have to be knowledgeable. Anyway, um, so let's see here. So, yeah, well, to speak in defense of coaches, but also getting that whole thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm doing coaching. I, that's not exactly why I'm part of Spiral Dynamics Integral. Um, and and I incorporate it in some ways silently, but a lot of times I I don't find a ton of overlap, although I'm trying to actually find more. Um, yeah, I think it's true that what Barbara said about the competition, I was pretty surprised by that. Um, but I think the internet actually made that worse. People always thought the internet would make things more egalitarian. It's this concept I have of alpha syndrome. It's like you have to be the authority in your field with the most views to be able to, you know, even make a living in the thing. There, there's just like with publishing, there's no mid-list writers anymore. If you're a mid-list writer, you're not a professional writer, basically. You're, you're kind of a semi-professional part-time writer. Um, I think some of us have made efforts to do some collaboration. I mean, Christian and I have had discussions and stuff like that. It, it doesn't have to all be competition. You know, obviously you can keep some of your own personal stuff to yourself and not share all your business secrets with everyone. But yeah, that is a, a problem, but I, I think it's not coach's fault. It's the way that the system is set up right now where you, if you don't get to the top, you're basically at the bottom. Um, in terms of leadership and Jerry, I like what Paul is saying about a different kind of leadership. Like, But again, it ties into that alpha syndrome thing. No one wants to listen to you unless you are the guy or the woman who is known in the field, right? It's a real it's an evolutionary mechanism that's good. You don't want to just listen to any wing nut, but it's it's gone to extreme lengths with the internet. Back in the day, you can be like, oh, at least, oh yeah, the local guy who talks about that thing. He's not world famous, but you listen to him. Now you're like, cares about that guy. I'm listening to the guy from Abu Dhabi who has 40 million followers. So, um, but, and yeah, another terminology, another way of looking at leadership, you know, there's lots of ways I'm not going to go into all that, but I think that, just the questioning of what leadership even is. It's like, hey, everyone, let's go, you know? Well, maybe that's not really what it is. And you look into Taoism and there's there's this book, um, it's based on the Tao Te Ching, it's called, I don't remember, but it basically takes every element of the Tao Te Ching in terms of group, um, quote, see leadership, I don't even like that term, facilitation. And I've used it in some regards, and it's actually been very helpful. You're leading from behind. You're not like, here's my idea. Let's go. It's like, all right, take the temperature of this group here. What are people looking for? Okay. All right. That's not my favorite thing, but I'm going to help facilitate that thing. So that's a different kind of leadership. Um, and here's what I noticed now, with the exception of basically people who attend in this group. And, and honestly, anyone who's attended this group ever, I think is cool because they've at least made an effort to in interact with something, you know, that isn't like sanctioned by the authorities. Um, and so I, everyone who's been engaged with this group, I, I've found benefit from some of them are more well known than others, but even those, those folks are um, kind of of the more collaborative spirit. And, you know, whereas people like, so Barbara is part of like the old school kind of Don Beck situation, but she's, she's more, like open mind. I mean, Barbara obviously has her opinions and so do I, but she is, I've not found her to be stifling in terms of say, quote, leadership. Like I haven't really tried to be an integral leader, but like, you know, just putting stuff out there and, and helping facilitate things. I, I found Barbara to be um, really 
essential because she has that, you know, link to the original versions of this stuff. So I don't think it's just people who come from that school of thought are stifling, but I have found that, you know, in, and I'll, I'll say it in the Dom Beck, the Beck Graves Spiral Dynamics group, um, I've, I've been censored. I've had posts deleted. Mo many of the times that I've even tried to bring up ideas that were slightly, not even slightly different, but literally based on quotes from the original book. So, and nobody who is in this group is, is a part of this, but um, we'll just flat out come out and, and say incorrect things, inaccurate things, contradictory things, or at the very least, even if they're accurate, rude, um, just pushing down, you're not the official sanction, shut your mouth. And I think that's a real problem. And, you know, I, I, I've not pushed back a lot about that because I've grown over the years and I realize you don't just try to like fight the authority all the time, but people have really acquiesced to that. And I think that is central to some of the failures of the integral community as a whole. So these gatekeepers who, um, have caused some problems while at the same time contributing a lot of good stuff. Every person I'm talking about who has done that stuff has also contributed some really valuable stuff, but no one really calls them on their shit. And I think that's a problem. Um, and I'm probably not the personality type to do it because some people find me threatening. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, so that's, that's all I, I wanted to say about um, that I, I think what this group is doing, and I, and I think the effort to move forward with action-oriented stuff, um, I think is really positive. And you know, I'd like to be at least peripherally involved with all of that. So thanks. Wow, cool, Josh. I, the Alpha Syndrome is really a fascinating thing, and I think that uh, Daniel Schupenmacher Berger guy, whose name I can never say. He, he calls them super hyper agents, hyper agents. And it's a very fascinating thing. And I think we have to accept there's a, there's a phenomenon and then figure out how to capture them. So I like to just accept reality and then operate under that, that reality versus trying to say like, no, let's change reality. So we got to get ourselves some hyper agents and uh, get them excited about integral Anyways, one other quick thing, something I never even knew because I am just not that into the politics of integral is that there's really a big divide. And most of the people at this conference were Wilbur followers, right? And I, I kind of knew about it from the Facebook group, which I accidentally stepped into when I was first joining all these Facebook groups. That there's two camps, there's integral people and, and who follow Wilbur. And then there's the Spiral Dynamics people who follow more Beck. And I really, um, I don't see that as a valuable difference. I really don't see it. But the people who love Wilbur, like they read these books that are this thick, okay? I'm like, how are you carrying those books back because they were selling them at the, on the table? Like, how are you going to get that into your luggage? You're not going to pass the, like, the luggage weight. Like, anyways, that, that's another thing to be aware of that I wasn't, super aware of. Okay, Sophia. Hello, yes. Um, so now it's about 20 minutes ago that I'm responding <laughs> to a com with a comment is that, and this isn't just about the integral community and spiral dynamics, but the conference you said didn't even have a walk around Sedona, that you sat on your butt from nine o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. And what I what amazes me, well, in this community, but with so many others as well, is everybody's talking about it. I don't mean this community here, but in the spiral dynamics, and there's loads of conferences and discussions, and completely ignore the wisdom in the body, our body consciousness, our intelligence isn't being used, and it's a totally missed opportunity. You know, considering that it is something holistic. Um, I just think it, calling people to action happens after somebody has done an activity where they've been having a direct learning experience of something that means something to their whole being. And, and they, they sign your form while they're still standing up after feeling energized from that. So the whole embodiment part, I think, is missing. And um, I call myself an integral or oh, sometimes I call myself an integral regenerative coach. It's with a small I, 
and I don't think about the integral community. I'm using the word integral to mean wholeness, something that works with the wholeness of. So perhaps leadership could start there. I'm complete, thank you. Sophia, so I, I did tell all the things, each per not each person, occasionally, and Tom Habibi, also he was our, our host, like he did the emceeing, and he did try to do a like an embodiment stuff. So we, we did OM together the first night. And he did a few kind of things like that. Let's all do some breathing. But it was more of more meditation versus let's get the blood flowing. Let's all stand up and do some raise your arms and then, you know, forward fold. Like if I was running it every, before every session started, we would do just even one minute of moving the body because I mean, we're just this physical being that the blood is just pooling and the blood can't get up to the brain. And how are we going to be brilliant and insight and like geniuses here if the blood is not getting to the brain? I'm, so, not just to, I'm, I'm not just talking about, I am talking about the physical body. I'm talking about the presenters and the teachers of, when they have something to say is to, as Josh said, it wasn't interactive at all on multiple levels. But you, yeah. but you design an activity that gives somebody a direct experience of what you're talking about. So it doesn't go in one ear and out the other kind of thing. I, so that there's so that when what, what people have learned comes like the race, the deracialization guy, we could have all tapped into the multinational multiculturalness that we all have inside us, not just because genetically. But, you know, the the world is inside us. And how does that feel? And do something that is, you know, there's thousands of activities that I, with my little self, could have designed to the, so that it was something that was um, integral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a small eye. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It, it was a lot of slides and a lot of talking and a lot of inner in, intellectual stimulation versus workshop examples and getting up and but the thing is we have these groups that we were in so for about two hours every day we were in these groups where we were just sitting around discussing so those were way more interactive but it wasn't part of everyone's presentation that it would be an interactive experience so that yeah anyway Sophia I am totally on the same page as you that people don't learn just by listening or seeing slides. Like you need to feel it, you have to do an exercise. And when I do presentations, I often have like a workshop sort of thing. All right, let's go to Christian. Thank you, Sophia. Hi, so yeah, there's a few things that kind of came up for me. Cause again, like I, even like, you know, reflecting on my experience with spiral dynamics and how I got introduced to it. And again, it was it was kind of like I went to a business seminar for one reason. And again, at that time I was like 19 years old. Uh, I went to LA for this like digital marketing conference. And again, it was like a whole five day training. And then two of those days they went into like pretty good detail into spiral dynamics. And again, like I went you know, again, like I was like, you know, in my stage blue uh, for orientation. And then I got, you know, again, I was like in a business, you know, stage five environment. But again, like they were kind of at the cutting edge of like digital. This is like, yeah, 2010, 2011. So, but like these were all like digital advertising, digital marketers. Um, Evan Pagan, uh, in the dating niche, he's known as uh, David D'Angelo. He wrote a really su like su super multi-million dollar um, digital information product called Double Your Dating. And he, again, like he was just really interested in human nature and uh, evolutionary psychology. And again, like one of the, the things he came across that was super valuable, was spiral dynamics, integral. And, uh, and, but again, like he, he, he did mention Ken Wilbur, but he definitely was, I can tell him and White Witzmaw, because uh, again, they were, they were both, uh, doing that event that I went and again like the one of the reasons I'm bringing it up is because again I was doing some uh, I was switching some documents from my my external hard drive and I accidentally deleted a bunch of my 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 that program that live event 
and I almost lost it on my hard drive. And then I, I bought the software and re <laughs> restored those files. And uh, I was going through it. And again, it's one of those things that when I heard them for the first time in person, those ideas meant something to me then that now it means totally, I, I understand it. I, cause I have more life experience and I have more experience with this model and other people that it, there's certain nuance and details that I just couldn't quite grasp at that time when I was first being exposed to it versus now it's been almost like 10 years that, uh, yeah, there, there's just a lot of little nuance that, that I get that I just, I couldn't see in the past. So, um, but again, like even one of the things that came up for me was just like, you know, again, when you're in some of the lower stages, like, I mean, from six down, you know, everything is kind of hierarchical. There is kind of like, you know, and again, like even in my own experience, there's, you know, again, like you're, you're trying to, you know, survive in different social circles, different, you know, realities. And, you know, again, for me personally, it is kind of this, I had to assimilate you know, and a lot, and some of the assimilation is based on the coercion and it is based on like, you know, having to survive kind of certain levels of oppression um, versus like integration, which again, like there's more choice and consensus and, uh, you know, ability to kind of like, you know, level up on your own terms versus uh, somebody else's individual group agenda. But uh but yeah, I don't know. It, to me, it was just interesting how, again, we're, we're mentioning there's like all these different like groups that have kind of in their own way um, kind of use authority and influence to kind of create their own paywalls to teach spiral dynamics or integral. And uh, again, I came at it from a very different space. You know, I came at it from like digital marketing sales, like stage five, um, you know, trying to develop my stage five skills. And uh, I don't know, it's interesting because again, like some of the people like Evan Pagan, again, like I'm mentioning him now and like most people probably don't even know who he is. Um, Evan Pagan or Wyatt Woodsmall, Wyatt Woodsmall is like an NLP master practitioner. But, um, but yeah, and again, like they just, again, they're like super niche. And again, they, they presented it to like a business audience. And uh, I don't know, like my sense is just like, you know, again, like whatever industry or niche you're in, you can always introduce these ideas to a small audience. And then again, like spread it, you know, kind of through different industries, different niche groups. So you don't have to just be known as like the integral authority on X, Y, and Z, but just my thoughts. Christian, thank you very much for sharing your journey. And it brings up two questions for me. One is, do we think that the purpose of us getting together is to try to spread this this like the word right the message evangelical work i come from a christian background so evangelical like should we just be out there preaching this we got to get the integral word out there like is that something or are we just all experts in different areas and we just are like, the integral lens is just something we happen to have, but I'm trying to spread health and wellness. Josh is trying to save the planet. Sophia is trying to help people get more embodied and do like this kind of work, whatever it is that we're doing. Is that what we're just trying to get? Like, I think it's an interesting, like you are doing this because you're trying to get better at digital marketing, right? I think that's, so it's just an interesting question once we get the directory going what what are people trying to do and i think the people who are really involved in self development right there's like this whole market actualize.org right all these websites that it's like we need to help people you know develop and i i don't even know if that's how people develop like is that really i think people develop when they're in life circumstances that make them grow so taking a class Anyways, I enjoy all the things I've learned. It's not like I'm saying it's not good. Anyways, I just want to like point out that is the framework there just as an interesting part of some other thing? Is it because we're trying to purposely help people develop and grow? These are all questions that I don't know the answers to, but Christian, thank you. No, Brandon, Brandon, I'm a, I think 
part of part of what appeals to me about your your idea of you know having a, a lot of different groups interacting around specialty areas is that, I mean the truth is if you if you just take a big 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 issue global climate change um, well you you scratch below the surface of that designation there's a thousand reasons why we're in the, in the fix that we're in maybe even 10,000 and you can't address in a hierarchical way 10,000 different things you got to you got to subdivide you got to you got to somehow figure out how 10,000 groups will somehow work do their own thing and that hopefully out of that them doing their own thing you'll get a a an integrated global level solution Right. And the thing is that what do those people need? And I think they need community and maybe they need to learn new skills. And that's what we can help each other with. Like we can learn and we can feel supported. But do we need some top down person that's telling us what to do? I don't think so. Anyways. Go ahead. Yeah, Brandon, go ahead. I think yeah, Christian so had one more comment before well, we go to Brandon. Co Christian, you had one more thing you were saying. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but th there was, um, you know, again, like that notion that, again, like I was going through that course, that program, that live program, uh, it's, it's called the Master Map of Success, but like, again, very five orientation, but because um, again, like he, like Evan is a pretty intentional direct response marketer. So um, he's kind of targeting that program to like people in stage five. Um, so, but again, like he, it was interesting, like he mentioned that like, when I was like reviewing some of the ideas and some of the videos, he was mentioning how, you know, again, like sometimes all it takes is just one person at that stage of development to kind of bring you up or keep you up at that stage. So as long as you're aware of kind of your social environments, um, so, you know, again, like if you want to, you know, again, for us, you know, I feel like just the fact that we're, you know, we're just kind of having like an open dialogue and we're sharing integral spiral dynamics ideas, you know, it, it is kind of like a mirror reflection to where we're at, where other people are at. And it's kind of given us like that language and, and kind of like this perception. And uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's healthy. And I think, you know, more people should kind of, you know, should, but you know, it is a good opportunity to, to kind of like think, you know, grow and, and expand what's possible. Yeah. Thank you, Christian. I know every week I come, whenever I can come to this, which is not every week, but I always learn something that helps me think differently about the world. So I really appreciate everyone. Brandon, now we get to hear from you. And I, I, I don't know if I've met you before this, so I'm really excited. Oh, hi. Uh, well, yeah, nice hi. to meet you. I've only been participating for maybe like about a month, so I'm still like relatively new. Um, I guess kind of like my whole thoughts, I think like going top down is just kind of the wrong approach. Um, but I think what we really need is we need people participating in society who are concerned about the health of the entire systems and the systems they're working in. And the real strength of this paradigm is that it's um, process oriented. And um, I think the best thing we can do is just to kind of be out there making sure we're interacting with the world and not doing theory without practice. Like in particular, I think the world would benefit from um, more integrally minded people participating in all sorts of areas. Um, I think politics is a big one um, in particular. Um, something that's a little bit troubling um, is part of kind of like some of these integral um, communities that I've kind of been a part of and periphery to is just kind of like disdaining politics and not kind of bringing their like skills and knowledge to that arena. And the way I kind of look at it is that's a form of game denial because politics is going to happen like either way. Ideally, what we want is more process oriented people just working to improve like the health of, of the process and the entire like system. Yeah, you know, I really am feeling the echoes of my childhood in a devout Christian church right here. 
So I I totally agree. Like, I, have you listened to the rules for rulers? I have not. Okay, I'm gonna paste that. So politics is so dirty, right? It's so dirty. And I feel like most sane people don't want to get involved in it. But the truth is, it's a very important function in our world. And we need to have, you know, diversity. We, some of us need to do that. And if I, the thing is like, if we're called to do it, we should do it. But obviously it's a sacrifice and the people who do it, they're going to get grayer hair and die earlier. It's like a real well, well, it doesn't necessarily mean like run, running for office, but maybe just getting involved in like canvassing uh, local politics. You know, it doesn't have to be like an all consuming thing, but just, you know, take like a more like active like hand in it. And I guess like my own perspective is I've kind of had like a foot in integral world, but I've also actually had a foot in like canvassing and like politics and stuff. So it's kind of interesting just uh, kind of seeing kind of the where those like two uh, different like worlds kind of interact. So I think mm -hmm. like uh, just more process oriented integral people would be very beneficial to kind of have in like political world. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. And the thing is, then, then I start getting like, oh, we should evangelize right oh we should let people we should get people we should convert people um who are already there and yeah, no, it's less about that but it's more about knowing how to communicate and be compassionate towards people who don't share your values and kind of uh, helping the political like uh movements and things that exist kind of break out of like their own like echo chambers by speaking mm -hmm. to kind of cross communicating to them and like their own like values because mm -hmm. yeah. that's definitely something we can do right all right well brandon thank you so much for uh bringing that up and it's i think it's important to recognize that also so Veronica and then Barbara, and by the way, full disclosure, I have to leave a little early. I'm running a meeting. Um, so later on, not later on, very shortly. So I, I can't stay for the whole time today, but um, let's just, I'll go through Veronica and Barbara and then I have to run. But but Paul will stay and everyone who wants to keep talking can, can, and I can watch the video later. All right, Veronica. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in kind of on some of the criticisms that you bet and Sophia also made about the potential of this. I mean, it's always easy to be the critic. And I admit that I mean, putting together a conference is not easy. And, you know, kudos to the organizers for for doing it. Uh, because they in their own way, they did take that initiative that others weren't taking. I mean, when they came here uh, to explain to us their motive for doing the the conference uh it it was it's great that they that they felt the need to take that initiative and that they followed through with it so again it's easy to criticize on the outside and putting together a conference isn't easy um but when I, when i do think about what it means to be integral in an embodied sense as sophia said and what the potential was just the idea of being in an in an old style conference room i mean for me a conference room just represents the old world and what are we trying to move towards in this new world? And can we actually give some sign of what that new world could be via that gathering, which is done in a new way? So being in a conference room with a projector with slides, you can transmit certain information. And I'm, I'm sure that a lot was learned, but it could have been so much more. I mean, it would have been so interesting to walk about with everybody through the hills of Sedona and be giving talks as you walk through the woods, <laughs> for example. Um, it, mm, somebody from the area could have pointed out what some of the native plants are. Actually connect. I mean, part of our the crisis that we're having now is being disconnected from nature. And that you couldn't really be more disconnected than being in a conference room talking the whole time. So to have had those talks while walking through some natural landscape, to have cooked the meals together maybe, <laughs> and made the food or had prepping teams to, to, to put some love into the food that was being made and consumed, uh, to just really embody the concepts that were being shared. 
I think would have had so much value. I, it just feels like it's time to do things differently. And in order to do that, we have to be somewhat radical and we're not being radical enough. It's just not enough to keep sharing the same platitudes about how the world needs to be better. Like we need to do things differently. And again, it's easy for me to say, I mean, I, I teach in a school and I am so sick of being in a classroom, but that's what we have. I mean, we have to work in the world that, that we're given and I have my own constraints. I get very frustrated too. Um, I, I try to think about what are examples of things that have been done different me, differently. I mean, Burning Man might be an example. I've never been to one. It's out in the middle of the desert and people really are creative. I also know that things can get a little bit out of hand and that um, I, I've read a lot of criticisms of it too. I'm not saying that Burning Man is, is the ideal context either. I'm just saying that I, I think we need to be thinking way, way bigger and way, yeah, we, we could be much more creative than we're being, I think. Um, that's what I wanted to say. Listen, as someone who just quit working at Meta, right, the Metaverse, even though, you know, whatever, um, I also just listened to a Neil Stevenson hour and a half or so podcast on the Metaverse. It, I love that guy so much. He is so smart. And I, I totally agree. Like, we need to open our mind and think about things differently. And I, I'm all for that. So totally on board veronica i like how you start off like oh we shouldn't just criticize and then the rest of your comments all criticism anyways that was funny <laughs> um yeah yeah well we I, that's that's why i was saying i i was i was prepping i was saying i'm about to criticize oh. and i know it's easy to criticize so forgive me <laughs> yeah we should do something experimental something crazy all right i don't know who barbara barbara you're next yeah. You know, you know, uh, evangelism. Um, I, I, I think maybe that's too narrow a concept, right? So there, there's pieces that are really important. One is, uh, there are probably a million people out there who are ready for second tier ideas, and they're a voice in the wilderness locally. Um. And they they have no support. They have nobody to talk to. I mean, you know, Paul and I both notice we're, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And and that's a problem. You know, when, when I'm talking with local people, it's uh, when I'm lucky talk, talking to orange and, and green. And if I'm really lucky, half of them are even healthy. But uh, there, so so there's something that needs to be done about just helping people connect with communities, right? Um, and and not to be, and, and I don't mean that as an elitist thing. I mean, to connect with communities that can have discussions that you're ready to have, right? And in in for a lot of people, there, there's no one in, in their immediate uh, area that, that is ready to have the discussions that, that they're ready to have. So, so I think that's a really important thing. And it's not at all evangelism. It's simply c connecting uh, with folks who think differently. And, and that's a critical thing we need to do. But then the other thing that, uh, that I have often thought about this, um, you know, uh, way, way back, my expertise is uh, in Myers-Briggs and I used it in tech, uh, groups to help folks who just don't see people to interact better with the folks around them. And one of the things that I would hear from that and also from NLP as a criticism of both is that, oh, they're, they're really easy to use to manipulate people. And, and that is true. I mean, if, if, if I know your personality type and, and a little bit of NLP, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I, I can, uh, pull you into things that, that you probably wouldn't want to do, right? At, but I look at it exactly the opposite. If I don't know that those techniques are out there, then I have no self-defense against uh, what the bots are doing for me. And so I, I feel like it's really, really important that 
we inform people who are willing to listen about differences in worldview, about how polarities work, about how uh, neural marketing works, about how insidiously evil the metaverse is going to be in terms of uh, mucking with their brain, right? Uh, pe people need to hear that, not in a, oh, the sky is falling, but in a more, you know, this, stuff is going on and it influences us all. We all get grabbed by some Twitter bot uh, that, that's total nonsense, but it sounded good when it flashed by on the screen, right? It's, it, and, and no matter how hard folks work at being conscious, you, you still tend to get sucked in. So it's, it's important that, that larger numbers of people understand more about how psychosocial uh, things work and and also that maybe how the um, the metaverse is is working um, in in not a particularly nice way and and so not in an evangelism but but simply in in a way to get some of this information out uh, for folks who are ready to hear it so the tech follow-up that Frankie and I are working on is with this other guy and maybe you guys know him daniel kirkpatrick so he is actually targeted or tar he picked up the assignment to do consciousness education for kids and the piece that frankie and i are volunteering to work with him on is limbic capitalism put that one barbara in your little definition your dictionary limbic capitalism so our, oh, yeah. our stuff on tech takes neural is, marketing to a new level of, of horror, right? I know, I know. You're gonna love this word. So he's talking about consciousness, which is slowing down, trying to be observant, and we're gonna be digging into the dopamine factory that this device and all the social media and everything is building on top of it with its you know, dopamine pathways, putting in your sympathetic nervous system, all this, you know these kids are being hacked basically right so that's the thing that we're specifically working on is trying to help kids understand what tech is doing to their brain so that they can slow down and be intentional because one of the big things that we our little group realized is these these kids are going to be writing the ai so we need to teach them now how to use it and develop it intentionally for the good of man and kind versus just being a zombie in their company where their boss tells them to write some code and they just do it. So anyways, we can talk more about that. I, I actually have to leave in two minutes. Veronica, you have your hand up, but I'm just trying to figure out if that's proper or if you just forgot to take it down. Okay. All right. To Sphere, and then I have to leave in two minutes because I have to run a, another meeting. Okay. Um, I. I just was listening to all, all you today, and it's amazing that the reaction from the, from the event is that everybody feels that we are not doing enough to, to act in the world, that we are failing to do real change. And I want to share with you some work I've done. I will do it quick because it's longer. Paul, can I share screen? Can you open the share screen? I just did. Uh, okay. Okay, it's worth it. So, so, I, so to but, spare, I'm just gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna watch this on the recording. Yes, I send it to you by on your on the messenger. So you okay. can see it on the messenger. All right. So thanks everyone. I will see you guys next time. Okay. Bye. Thanks, but bye. 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 Um, so I, I will go with, with this quick. I just I I did some private research uh, investigation. What are the causes that, uh, that the spiral dynamic, which is brilliant to me, doesn't affect doing, affecting the world? So I, will, I use it as a condition for change. The don't back uh, describe, don't back uh, describe six, but later on you describe another three or four. And I will share it with you. Okay, so 
First of all, it's a potential for change. If we want to do some change, uh, it doesn't matter if it's first order or second order, we need potential for change. And in this web, open, arrested, and close. And right now in the community, when I look at people or listen to computing, my opinion is that some of the second tier thinkers show openness, uh, but many of us are still in arrested state. We are, we are not capable of thinking of new ways uh, to change. The second, uh, the second uh, condition is solution for past and current problems. Uh, did we get uh, to, to a comfort zone that current problems are being handled and do we have capability to solve the next problems? And I think that most of us see that uh, there are problems in first year world. Um, so this is, this is I, I mark it in V because it's, it's, it's a potential for change that is, is happening. Dissonance is, uh, do we have enough dissonance that drive us to change? And definitely we see dissonance in the world. We, need, we know that there is many things to change. Uh, identif ident identify the barrier to overcome. And so I think we are pretty much identified with the barriers that first tier is causing the problems. We are identified, we are understanding the problem is in politics, in economic, in education, is that uh, causing but by first tier way of thinking. Now we go, we go to interesting things. Insight into alternative and solutions. I don't think we came up with a new solutions yet in the community. This is why it's so hard to change. We don't have a clear view of what we can change. The sixth uh, condition is consideration and support, which means we are have some kind of a uh, of support to each other or other support. And if somebody in the community want to lead change, there is no support in the community. So this is completely failing. Uh, leverage tipping, the right time and place. Uh, we are aware that the time and action is closed or it will be too late because we see what happened in the world. This is my opinion. Of course, you can argue about it. Inserting of energy. Now, energy is manpower, resource, organization, and of course, money. And we do not have any strong energy. If we want to do change, we don't have this energy. We can talk, uh, we can talk about it, but there is no real energy to do some real impact. And the nine uh, conditions that the uh, don't back uh, 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 expand was anticipation for new problems, which is that, the, that the evolution is continue, which is something that of course we are very far from because we are still dealing with today problem. So this is very shortly, this is just my observation. So if, if we want to do some more change, we, we are lacking like three main things, which are clear vision, what to change, and consolidation, consolidation, which means coming together. And the third thing is energy. If we could arrange those three things, we might be able to do some real impact. Right now, we don't have it. That's it. Thanks, Safir. That was really interesting. Um, I wish I had some way that we could all get access to that. Um, Josh, go ahead. You go ahead, Paul. You got something? Oh, I was just going to say, and it's just a comment off of what Safir just shared. Um, 
it's hard for me to, and I totally agree, this insertion of energy is totally lacking. We have no way to do it. Um, and it's totally lost on me how we're ever going to do that as long as we're defining energy in the old traditional first tier ways, and that is of power, authority, and money. I mean, it's it would be if if the system itself, if the current structure of power, authority, and money were to go through a you know end of the Cretaceous period, you know, asteroid destruction, um, yes, I could see opportunity for change, but just like those little voles that were running around, uh, you know, in the Cretaceous, end of the Cretaceous period, they didn't, you know, they didn't have a prayer taken on a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it took, it took the destruction of the old dominant ways to allow a new environment to develop. And I don't know how to do that without destroying the old. And that's yes. I I I I'm I'm not sure that the energy is only money, but definitely money is something uh, you have to be aware of using it. Right. Uh, and uh, but but la lacking lacking of energy is definitely holding us back. So uh, if we are too afraid of using it, we will never have the impact, I guess. Maybe I will be surprised. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't really see it so much as a fear of using it. It's, it's the fact that, you know, it, money is powerful. I mean, there's just no denying that. I mean, you could come up with the most clever way of, of advancing a positive agenda, but if there's enough money behind crushing you, you're going to get crushed. Um, now, having said that, there's probably new ways of thinking about how do you what energy means, how to use energy. Um, yes. That yes would include aspects of power and authority and monetary economic elements, but um, I just haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. Go ahead, Josh. Thanks, thanks, Safir. Yeah, I guess it's all about what we wanna do. And I think ironically, the challenge of integral thinkers is that we, while we're able to communicate or at least see the perspectives of others and, and maybe find more common ground with other integral thinkers. I think by definition, we differentiate even further. So we become like very, very unique individuals with our own vision of, of how things should be. So it's like, we're even less and less on the same page, unless we just acknowledge, okay, well, what is the thing? What is the one thing we can all agree on to a certain extent. Now I participate in this group. Most of what I do, I try to be action oriented. And that was my original hope with the group. I, I don't, here's the thing. I consider this weekly attendance in a sense, not to be an action, but the creation of the group and the facilitation of the group is an action. And so this space is really important. And so I think it's, I think we both need to do the inner work and then the outer work does this group result in getting a elected official on, you know, no. Um, I do think that there are specific campaigns or projects we could work on, but most of why I attend this group, even though I lean towards other things is yeah, just for communion, for a place where I can express my opinion, just like, oh, Josh critiqued a thing a woman did and we're not gonna ruin his career by calling him sexist for doing so, you know, like it's gotten that bad for folks like me who are in very progressive circles, um, they're they're madmen. Like like you can't talk. So as long as I talk the talk that fits them, so the ecological realm, I'm I'm weirdly safe. At the same time, I'm 
threatening because I believe most of the mainstream environmental movement is a joke, but that's like safe, right? Like I can't get canceled for being that. So I stay out of the other topics. So, th so that's, I come here just where I can finally talk to people and they're not going to, you know, jump down my throat about not, you know, having some basically ideology. So I think that's really important, but I think in terms of, it was a question before, so the proliferation of spiral dynamics integral, I do think it's important, but I don't think it's for everyone. So I think getting it into the hands and the minds of people who are ready for it, like it's amazing. Like you, you see these people online, you know, bitching all day long about some topic and they're like, I don't understand. Like, how is it the left is now? It's like, we have a model that explains it. It's very simple. And like, and they're just like going in circles. I can't understand why it's like, you idiot, just read one book and now you'll have it. But they don't have that grasp. And it may be that they're, they've never been exposed to it. They've never been exposed to it properly, or they're just not ready for that. Because I, I do think unless you either are, have access to integral thinking, or you're not an egomaniac and you're willing to accept that maybe you don't, um, you're not going to be into a model that quote puts you below, even though I don't think that's a fair interpretation. But last thing I'll say is that I think that while internally the colors and the codes are very useful, like I, I'm very much in favor of that, but I think externally it's useless and, and cultifying. So I actually like what some elements of what um, Institute for Cultural Ecology is doing. I don't, I don't agree with all their approaches or premises or anything like that, but I like how they break it down to the original, I don't know if it's the original terminology, but they'll use traditional, they'll use modern, postmodern, and I mean, integral, that gets a little fishy because no one knows what that means. But so I think that is a way that we can, you can talk to, well, all right, well, that, you know, that Christian person has a more traditional lifestyle. And then the, you know, the progressive person would be like, yes, they tradition, because tradition's backwards, they'll think. And then you talk to that person in blue, like traditional, they're like, damn right, I'm traditional. So, you know, modern, you talk to a tech person, yeah, I'm modern, you know, and then postmodern, you know, they like that too, I guess. So those terms, I think we can get out there a little more. And I, I think it's good for us to practice doing so I nowadays when I make a post I try to use both I try to be like postmodern green you know so I I'm playing in that sandbox but I'm also using a terminology that can make sense is non-threatening to people and that's what I recommend in terms of trying to get it into the the hands and minds of people who are ready for it yeah thank thanks Josh that's Go ahead, you know, Barbara. One, one thing that occurs to me, uh, particularly uh, about the integral folks, but uh, also the spiral dynamics, uh, green and, and turquoise can get into that. And that is the idea that change just has to be emergent and that you can't push it. And that's not how systems work. You know, they can be pushed, right? And right now, uh, as you talk about power, Paul, our systems are being all pushed in the in in catastrophic directions by folks with money and power. And right. so uh, you know we're, we're we're probably not going to come out of this very well if if we think that um, solutions uh, will emerge uh, without us. Um, pushing a little bit, including maybe, uh, you know, the Kali force. My NLP friends all tell me that I come in with a lot of that. Um, and there, you know, some things just have to die for new things to be born. I, I tend to like the term hospicing uh, rather than destruction. You know, there, hmm. there's, and, and that works well for traditional people, right? Um, you know, this this worked well 100 years ago, uh, not so much today. Uh, so so how can we gently let it uh, go off in, in, into that night and replace it with something that's uh, better for all of us, including traditional people? And one of the, uh, you know, we talked about leadership. 
um, and when we talked about, um, you mentioned tipping points, Safir. I'm um, so Otto Scharmer uh, does a lot with rapid prototyping and looking locally at things that then if they work locally, uh, you can try and spread around and scale, right? And that sort of underground um, radicalism, I think is maybe a toe into the political, right? So you can start with uh, doing something locally that changes your local school board or or your or your uh, county uh, commissioners, right? Or uh, um, I, I remember uh, telling my mother that it was her fault that that uh, the local government wasn't what she liked. The next thing I knew, they were running her for tax collector. And I'm going, Mom, how can I introduce you as my mother, the tax collector? But she she took it to heart, this, you know, old housewife, and ended up um, getting involved in local government and did make changes. And and I think that it, it seems like it will take forever, right? I mean, I sometimes say to my friends, so we're going to need to take uh, our democracy back one precinct at a time. And the response from most thinking people is, yes, Barbara, uh, for, forget about Biden and Trump and, and just start local and make changes. Now, the flip side of that is we do believe in tipping points. We do believe in things that work and can scale, right? So if, if I can make it work in an Iowa caucus, if I can make it work in, in a uh, Texas primary uh, for the local folks, Maybe I can uh, scale that up and, and make it work uh, at a larger scale. And, and we can begin to make some influence without necessarily starting out with a lot of money and power. Because one of the things I'm really noticing is how many people uh, are, are now um, coming out and saying that the two parties in the US have lost it. Uh, believe it or not, the, uh, the uh, Railroad unions just put out a um, a press release saying that both parties had sold them out, uh, so they were thinking of of uh, creating an independent party. Yeah, uh, so so Safir, you talk about the timing being right, and uh, and looking at those tipping points, um, we may not need as quite as much energy as I would have thought a year ago. You know, uh, one of the things that happens is folks like us notice things years ahead of time, right? And and then we have no uh, idea of how to get that change to happen. But but we now have stuff that is becoming common knowledge. Like, you know, in the U.S., the Democrats and the Republicans uh, never cared about a constituent in the last 40 years, and they're not about to start now. And and so if if that becomes common knowledge, then it's easier to make a change. And perhaps the uh, the energy to uh, to get out of the rut we're in, Paul, is lessening by the day. I I think we are we are uh, we don't have even spend the energy about thinking how what kind of change we want to do, which is a lot of thinking to do. And because we don't have the framing and the energy to do it, uh, sometimes we do it in the group and it's great. But uh, if we, I'm just imagining if there was like uh, this body of thinkers that meet in regularly and can start thinking of the action then, you know, just by thinking about it and focusing in it on thinking, it will make a big difference because right now we are not meeting and talking about specific change. Maybe this is not the group to do it. I, I don't know because I am doing, doing exactly that, uh, but not, not with integral groups, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And isn't that interesting? So why do I, think uh, integral groups aren't a 
good place to work on politics? I don't know. Uh, th that's a, a really good question. Um, and and maybe it's it's because I, I kind of think this is more about larger scale psychosocial change. And but I I could be I could be wrong about that, Safir. Um, so so I'll let people know. I in the U.S. I am actively working on um, on on practical models of political change with with some small groups. Uh, so if anybody else is interested in that, you can. Uh, uh, I am me on on Facebook, and and maybe we will do it in an integral group. Great! If you want to do it in Israel, I uh, I will uh, join. <laughs> I I don't think I have very much uh, uh, on the ground knowledge, and and I think you you need that probably. Yes. All right. Thank, so thank I, you. I, I'm going to give you a chance to talk, and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to turn off the recording then. Uh, yeah, Christian had a comment. Yeah, so there's actually um, a quote that I want to kind of bring up last minute. But yeah, there's a, kind of like a theme we're talking about. And there's a quote by uh, Buck, Mr. Fuller and it goes like this it's uh you never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete and it was, but yeah and I think there's I mean and again like at a personal level <clears throat> again yeah there's this <laughs> there was you know in the past like this this sense of like you know going I think I'll, I'll take my you know funny jabs at the Mormon church every once in a while. But again, yeah, there's this, there was this part of me that's like, oh, Larry, like I'll kind of want to get the truth of like all the like, stuff they've been hiding and all the stuff. stuff. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, why, why am I fighting this? Like, what's the point of all that? Like, again, people are going to be at that stage four of development, no matter what, you know? So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to move on to my own reality, my own kind of worldview of doing things. And I'm just going to let that for me, that model just be obsolete and just move on. So, uh, although I do think, Christian, that um, it's important for um, us to hold a space for them to land. So, because um, people.